welcome everyone to this June 12th meeting, 2023, of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a regular meeting, and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy, and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment physically, mentally, emotionally, and academically. And these are our core values. We appreciate your interest in the student. We appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. All right. I'm going to ask that you all rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. <laughs> Mr. Chambers, would you lead us in the invocation? Absolutely. Dear Heavenly Father, we first and foremost say thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength, God. We thank you for allowing us to gather once again. Father, we ask that you would just continue to lead God and direct us in all um, truth, and that we will continue to do the things that is pleasing um, towards you for our educators and our students in the district of Carson County Independent School District. Lord, we thank you for this day. We ask that you would just continue to protect us as we leave this place, that we make it home safe. Bless all these things your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Next, we're going to go into the superintendent's report. Well, I am very pleased to announce that summertime is here. And despite the fact that we have had rain and storms um, for the past several days and we're under an alert right now, um, we're grateful We're grateful for the rain. And we're grateful to have summer school in full swing. Um, it runs through June 22nd, and it is for students who need um, support and a makeup time for attendance, um, grades, or for star assistance. Also, our pre-K and kinder bilingual at ESL students have been attending classes. And as I hope that you saw on some of our social media posts venturing out into our community on field trips with their continued summer learning. It's also camp season, so in addition to several camps that are currently ongoing, uh, please be on the alert for a lot of our different athletic programs that are sponsoring camps this summer. Um, camp Curiosity and Little Tiger Cub Camp, two of our big camps, will be held June 26th through the 29th, and then we'll have Jump Start um, in July 10th through the 27th. So parents who are looking for something to keep your children busy this summer, we have a place for you. Our Back to School Stay in School Rally is Saturday, July 29th, and it's not too early to go ahead and put that on your calendar. It will be held at the IOOF Event Center. All of our schools and departments will be represented in this annual kickoff event that is organized by our local, the local branch of our NAACP. Finally, Corsicana ISD offices and campuses will be closed Monday in honor of the Juneteenth holiday. So we'll just have three days next week in our offices. Um, also, um, with happiness and sadness, we want to um, wish Kim Holcomb the very best in Keratin Farmers Branch. She's going there to be the Assistant Superintendent for Curriculum and Instruction. So we are sad to see her leave, but we are happy for her future success, and we wish her the very best. Thank you very much. All right, we're going to move into discussion action items. So number A is consider approve the prevailing wage rates. 
Okay, so these next really three items have to do with replacement of the air conditioning units on top of Corsicana High School. Uh, Mr. John Reese is here with Performance Services. You may remember that earlier in the year they did a full audit of all the different, all the buildings, and we um, are able to take $3.8 million from our ESSER funds in order to replace the air conditioning units on top of Corsicana High School, which is just one element of what um, they looked at when they did the audit. So there's a lot of steps that go into this, and the first step is for is tonight. I'm asking the board to approve these three different things. Um, I'll go through each one of those, and what that does is when we get a final report back from our or approval back from our architect, um, we have to have a certification from Jonathan Aldis, who you all know um, we worked with him when we were doing our bond before with the building of the middle school. So he's going to send us their certification, and tonight you're giving me the authority to execute the contract once we have that final step from him. Um, we have our, all the documents reviewed um, by an attorney with Walsh Gallegos, so we're, we're making sure that we're checking all our boxes on this. So this very first item um, is a legal requirement, and what it says is that the district will um, is taking action to adopt prevailing wage rates um, as published by the U.S. Department of Labor in accordance with the Davis-Bacon Act. And this is just one step we have to verify that, the, that this is the, um, the wage rates that the district is approving is just adopting. Okay. I will entertain a motion then. A move that we adopt the prevailing wage rates published by the United States Department of Labor in accordance with the Davis-Bacon Act, 40 U.S.C. 3141, and its subsequent amendments in a connection with the school district construction projects excluding payment of fringe benefits except for federally funded projects until superseded by future board action. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the prevailing wage rates published by the United States Department of Labor in accordance with the Davis-Bacon Act 40 U.S.C. 3141 and its subsequent amendments in connection with school district construction projects excluding payment of fringe benefits except for federally funded projects until superseded by future board action. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we have adopted the prevailing wage rates published by the U.S. Department of Labor in accordance with the Davis-Bacon Act. Okay, the second step is to consider approval of the interlocal agreement, which is job order contract. What we're requesting the board do is approve job order contracting through an interlocal agreement as our delivery method for this contract and for the work that it encompasses. Any questions? Any motions? Yes. I move that we approve job order contracting through an interlocal agreement as a delivery method providing the best value to the school district for the HVAC replacement and controls upgrade project at Corsicana High School. Is there a second? Second. We have a motion and a second that we approve the job order contracting through an interlocal agreement as a delivery method providing the best value to the school district for the HVAC replacement and controls upgrade project at the Corsicana High School. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Ayes have it and we have approved the job order contract contracting through an interlocal agreement as a delivery method providing the best value to the school district for the HVAC replacement and controls upgrade project at the high school. Okay, and the third step is to consider um, approval of the agreement with performance services. What the next several pages are the full details of what will be replaced, including the existing conditions, the scope of the work, um, the tonnage for the air conditioning units, and um, the different steps and information that will be taken throughout the course of the work. So we're asking the board to consider and take action on um, this amount, not to exceed three $3.8 million um, and to award the contract to performance services through the TIPS contract and to delegate the authority to the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract. Okay, 
have any um, questions, Mr. Reese is here and would love to talk with you about air conditioning units, I'm sure. Do you want to get Mr. Reese up here? Let's talk to him real quick. Are we good? How many units are we yeah. Uh, Mr. Reese, if you can. Uh, good evening, members of the board. I'm not happy to answer any questions that you guys have. How many, I guess, how many units? Um, 67. 67. And yes. how long, how, what would the time frame be? For so years? the district has until September 30th of 2024 to use the extra funds. And my guys are telling me we'll be done by July, early July. 2024. In the agreement, um, I talked to the attorney today, um, the end date for installation is July 1st, 2024, and that gives us some room before teachers come back and then students come back for the 24-25 school year, and um, in addition to that, um, the um, they've reassured us that the building will be fully functional right. throughout the course of the replacements, um, so our students will not... Um, be uncomfortable. Our staff will not be uncomfortable. They'll be able to be in the building throughout the time that the units are being installed. Because you'll be, you'll be replacing them during the school year, correct? Correct. Okay. Part of the school year. I understand you guys are going on a flex schedule, so we'll work with the district's calendar and schedule to make sure that we're not interrupting school. And just for those that you know, we've talked, this is not the first time we've seen him, and we've talked in great detail about this, but also from experience, um, these these lead times are, are real. They're pretty well. It, it is really very discouraging to see that it really is taking six months to get right. these units in. So. We do a lot of prep work in between that yeah. time, and we'll do that, especially with the Wi-Fi thermostats and things that your mm -hmm. staff have already started to implement. We'll go ahead and get all that wrapped up before the units hit the ground. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for Mr. Reese? Okay. Well, I'll entertain a motion. I move that the board award the HVAC replacement and controls upgrade project at Course Kenna High School in an amount not to exceed three million eight hundred dollars to Performance Services Incorporated through TIPS contract number two one one zero zero one and delegate the authority to the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we've, we've where the motion is the board award the HVAC replacement and controls upgrade project to the Corsicana High School in the amount not to exceed three point eight million dollars to Performance Services Incorporated through TIPS contracts number two hundred eleven thousand and one and delegate authority to the superintendent to negotiate and execute the contract. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. Eyes have it, and we have awarded the HVAC replacement and controls upgrade project at Course Canada High School. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. A technology department update. Ms. Howell. Thank you, Dr. Brown, Dr. Frost, and distinguished members of the board. The purpose of this update is just to apprise all of the stakeholders of what's going on in technology with infrastructure and upcoming initiatives. So in our framework, we have four um, pillars, connecting the learner, promoting literacy, leveling the playing field, and measuring the impact. So we have several highlights from this year. Uh, Class Link being something that we did early last summer. It's our single sign-on. We went from Hello ID to Class Link. This new software has allowed for a better end-user um, support with our students and our staff. It's got better features and better security than, than we had with Hello ID. So um, we really like ClassLink. Um, it was a big change going from Hello ID to that. Um, our server environment has been fully upgraded during the school year. Um, Everything is completely upgraded. Our server, our network, our internet. So we're really proud of that. So hopefully for the next seven to 10 years, uh, we're still gonna be great and we'll just kind of make those small changes each year. Um, at Collins Intermediate this year, or in August, we installed 58 new 70-inch uh, flat panels that that campus was totally upgraded. They went from just regular smart boards to, flat, to Prometheum uh, flat panels. 
We also installed one-to-one -one access points at Collins Intermediate and Corsicana High School. Those were the last two campuses that that needed to happen, so there's better access for Wi-Fi and for the, our network um, at both of those campuses. And then, of course, the implementation for Skyward for students in business. That's been a huge undertaking for not only technology, but the business office and um, everyone that um, deals with Skyward student side. So some of our uh, summer projects, we're going to be imaging all of our devices, which means that these devices will be at their best ability, uh, most efficient when the students come back in August. We're also going to do a device inventory. We're going to audit our inventory and conduct that on each campus, make sure we have all the devices that we, we have. Um, we do have some that may have went missing throughout the year. Uh, we do have Absolute, which we are tracking all those. So I think right now we're missing maybe seven to 10 laptops out of about over 6,000. So that's, we're really proud of that as well. Uh, new line panel refresh at Sam Houston. They're going to be getting uh, 25 new flat panels this summer. That should be happening in, in July. So by the time the teachers come back, they will have those already installed. And they'll also have a cart um, for the for their auditorium so that it'll make it a bigger, I think it's an 80 inch uh, flat panel for their auditorium. We're also building a dedicated SPED camera server for all of our SPED cameras. So what that means is we currently have all of our servers on each campus and we're going to move that one server to the admin building so that our technology team can use that. It'll be here and they can uh, make sure they can watch everything that's happening and making sure that we still have all that camera footage. We are installing at the stadium um, fiber, so that means at the stadium when you're going to the concession stand during football season, there won't be Wi-Fi hotspots. They will actually be on our network through the fiber, so there shouldn't be any problems with like credit cards, um, things like that. So we're really excited about that as well. Um, Informacast we're, is an alerting system that we're installing across our campuses. That's part of our safety and security grant with Officer Stevens. Um, it sends mass notifications. It can do audio, text. It can, it can go to our flat panels. If there's any type of safety or security issue, it can go straight to our phone system, multiple ways to, so we don't have to always have an all call. And um, it can go through just our Promethean boards and everything like that. And then we're also getting a secondary ISP for the 100 megabytes and 10 gigabytes fiber. So it's our secondary internet solution. So if our primary solution goes out, then we have a secondary that's always a backup for internet. And then we're adding 57 cameras to CHS in the stairwells and then in the baseball field house area. So we'll have plenty of cameras that we're adding. We have some, some spots when we had our safety and security audit that we looked through. So those will also be installed this summer. And that's it. That's our update. Any questions? All right. Thank you. Good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about our graduates um, and kind of just kind of update you on um, how some numbers that are important to uh, to you and to to Corsicana High School. Um, Total number of graduates we had this year was 405. Uh, we had 42 graduates from night school. And I want to talk to you a little bit about night school. Those are 42 students that um, would have dropped out. Those are students that were, were through with school, that, that we recovered, and, and they finished high school, got their diploma, and walked. That is an excellent program that we started um, last year. and. Um, Really look forward to keeping that going. That's well worthwhile. 42 students got their diplomas that, that wouldn't have. Um, number of early graduates, we had 26. And then this was our last cohort for uh, Higher Start. And we had 27 graduates for the uh, Higher Start program. Um, I added this just um, you know, with recent news, just to kind of give you an idea. Uh, we had non-completers, we had four non-completers from traditional school who didn't complete. Now that doesn't mean that they can't complete. Uh, they might have completed this summer and they may be working on it right now as we speak. And then we had eight from night school that were non-completers. So that's a, that's a pretty small number and um, we continue to work with those students. It's important to understand that we do continue to work with those students and, and make sure that they're graduates. Uh, we had five military enlistments. Uh, all going to the Marine Corps and 
you know, throughout the year, all of our armed forces come in at lunch and really try to meet the kids and recruit. And so uh, we had five students this year that enlisted in the military. And then uh, we talked about this a little bit. We had over 160 scholarships awarded at $3.3 million. And uh, six students received full ride scholarships. So that's, that's a really big number. Um, a lot of the credit goes to our counseling office, and um, they worked really hard this year, uh, led by uh, Patricia Daniels, um, really pushing the kids to apply for those scholarships, and um, really made a big difference. So we received 263 IBCs this year, uh, and I talked to you a little bit about how this has changed. So we only included the IBCs that actually count for the uh, CCMR point. So 263 is a really good number. Um, I'm not going to read list, the list of all the different ones, uh, but you can see that uh, students are really getting um, certified in some important things, things that they can take forward in, in careers, um, and, and I, we want that number to continue to go up. And uh, adding, the, adding the staff that we added last time I think will we'll help that. But that's two, there's 263 IBCs, and then that is it. Do y'all have any questions about this year's graduation or graduate report? No, I have questions. Yes, ma'am. I'm always worth $100. So these young people that didn't get their, the ones with the nice kids, the ones that didn't take the nice kids, do you guys still like encourage them? Oh, yeah. So what is like the. What is the motivation to get them to, hey, let's finish? Yeah, we don't stop, and, and we had several, I mean, first of all, the fact we motivate them in that night school is a motivation. You know, when we got them to come back, uh, part of the deal was night school, and, and um, walking is a big deal to them, but getting the diploma is even bigger. So we don't, it's not a discouraging thing that they didn't finish in time to graduate, and one of the things we tell them is, you can always walk next year. If walking is important to you and your family, then come back and walk with us. But the biggest deal is complete. Get your, get your diploma and finish. So they're in summer school. They continue in summer school. Uh, night school will kick back off in the fall. And, you know, we, we, yes, we, we don't give up on them. Um, to me, that's why I think night school is so important. Is it, it, It's a way to show them that we don't. And, and these are kids for, I can give you so many examples, but, you know, that, they have to go to work. Their families tell them they're going to work. So it's just an alternative to make sure that they get their diploma and, and, and not just leave and go to work and, and never get it. So it's an important program. I have, a, I have a question too. You know, from, from our perspective, I'd like to know what, what you thought about, you know, we all thought the importance of making such a, a massive change or directional change in the counseling um, at the high school this last year, and, and, and we saw more of that academic counselor and that, you know, mental and that CC, CCMR, right? Yes. Okay. Um, counseling aspect. Uh, but, you know, from what I've heard from parents, I mean, we all know that the number one way to get to a child is a relationship. And, and we all know that that is just becoming so much more difficult. But it, it feels as though, from our perspective, that that change has just had such monumental effects on these kids. And I think, you know, you asking that question, I mean, I heard of a counselor that said, you know, we're, they're still coming in. They're still our kids. We're still wanting to help them. You know, we're still encouraging them way after they would be done so from a perspective of being on the campus do you think it's as monumental as we feel it is yeah, absolutely I think you know you said two things one the academic counselors um, and and having you know your senior year is a big year having two counselors dedicated to you um, making sure that you do all this paperwork making sure you're filling out uh, the FAFSA forms you know that sounds like a small thing but I'm gonna tell you a lot of their time is built you know the state changed that requirement like to graduate you have to fill out your FAFSA or fill out the opt-out form and like pushing that through and like talking to every single student 425 students and make sure they do that and then offering the scholarships and keeping up with that and making sure like uh, yes, it's every bit worth uh, every cent we spent in that counselor's office. And then the licensed professional counselors, there's not an open second in their day. And there never will be. Like, I, I, I mean, um, they are used every day. Uh, they, are, they see kids 
all, all throughout the day. Um, emergency situations, they see them. Um, yes, they're very beneficial. And, and yes, I think that um, the staffing and, and showing attention to that department definitely made a difference. It, and it showed in not just the scholarships, but day in, day out. The, the attention that they got, the attention that our parents in the community got, it made a big difference. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. And let me tell you something else that it, that it opened up that I've noticed and we've noticed in talking to Patricia. Um, the community is is really that we've we've had some community people come to us that weren't involved in giving scholarships in the past that see the attention given and want to start giving money. And, and there were several, several in the last couple months that have reached out uh, to Miss Daniels and to Course County High School saying, hey, look, we want to be a part of that. We want to be a part of the, uh, the presentation when we present it at Awards Day. So, um, and that's good. That's just good for our students and good for CISD. The, the, more, the more people we have given to the students, then it's just it's good stuff. So. Oh yeah. They got the Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, if you add up, there's some big scholarships available here. Absolutely. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. All right. Now we're going to go to the annual TEAK certification. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to say that, but yes, ma'am. Um, Dr. Brown, Dr. Frost, and distinguished members of the board. Oh. I have the exciting report to give you of the TEKS <laughs> annual certification. Um, this is our annual certification that's in accordance with the Texas Education Code 31.004. Basically, we are having to certify every year that we have materials to cover 100% of our TEKS, um, excluding physical education. However, we are covered 100% on that as well. So um, moving through, um, I'm just going to briefly highlight a few things um, that do need to be brought just to your attention so that you are aware uh, before you sign um, at the end of the certification. Um, for reading language arts certification, uh, we are using the uh, specified scope and sequence that is through the adoption. Um, we are continuing to use our into reading, which is Houghton Mifflin Harcourt, uh, for K through two, as well as third through fifth grade. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, third and fourth grade. Starting in fifth grade, we've been using the McGraw-Hill Wonders program since we did our adoption in Proclamation 20. That has also gone very well, and they are continuing to use that program which also aligns to our social studies TEKS. Um, we also have added over this past year a supplemental product that you'll see in that next category under question 5.1 on the K through 2 Saxon Phonics program and we also have an adaptive curriculum program of progress learning. We have used that program for quite a while. You've often heard to it referred as the um, education galaxy but it is now under the umbrella of progress learning. They did a merger. Um, and the Saxon Phonics you've heard us mention before in prior board meetings and it has gone extremely well. Um, the data from that we are still gathering, but we can already tell from early DRA scores that the students' literacy scores have already had significant increases. In third through fifth grade, our supplemental program we added as a pilot this year, <clears throat> excuse me, we were able to do for free uh, the HMH Writable program. We did an instructional survey uh, with all of our teachers at the end of the year to get feedback from them on what they liked, what they didn't like, where they needed extra support, uh, what would they like to see us renew, and where would the best use of our uh, funds and dollars go for supplemental programs. And overwhelmingly, all of the teachers that utilize that program in third through eighth grade uh, were like, please renew that program, find a way. It has been significant. Um, um, an in improvement because the program itself is digital and it mirrors itself on the same platform as our STAR testing platform. So when the students are able to go in there, they're writing essays and their short constructed responses, they practice the way that it will be done on the state test. So it has been an outstanding program and I am 
very thankful uh, for the board's support in that because we are renewing that next year as a supplemental program. Uh, also, progress learning continues for those. Um, moving on um, into our upper grades, uh, we do for Spanish, obviously we have K through two does the HMH program Ariba that is continuing. We did do an eight year adoption for that. McGraw Hill has the mirrored program, which is Maravillas. And then we have a supplemental program for phonics for Spanish, which is Estrelita. Um, and there will also be continuing writable and imagine learning for those grades. At the secondary level, sixth through eighth grades continuing study hill, uh, study sync with McGraw Hill, and our higher um, pre-AP programs use College Board Springboard. So that will also be renewed. That was up this year. Um, the program Writable and Progress Learning extends through those grade levels as well. And then for the high school level, for nine through twelve, HMH into reading is our adopted program there, and continuing with our AP and pre-AP, they will be using College Board Springboard as they have done in the past. AP English four does use Cengage Learning, and then also Writable came with their adoption, so that program now will be a, a third through high school program, which is really great when you can vertically align the programs in within the district. As far as math is concerned, we're still in our gap years for math, uh, but we have uh, utilized some programs with the feedback from our uh, teachers as well as our administrators, and we've made a couple of changes in this particular area. Uh, the K through five um, will be continuing with uh, STEM, well, excuse me, it's K through six, but in this report, it breaks it up K five. They will be using the STEM scopes program as we did last year. We'll continue with progress learning as our supplemental program for adaptive curriculum. And then in seventh and eighth grade, they will do some supplemental programs with maneuvering in the middle. We have used that program in the past, which is also 100% aligned to the TEKS. And then College Board Springboard is used for our pre-AP classrooms. At the high school level, we will not be renewing STEM scopes, but instead we will be using for Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and Geometry. Get More Math is a program they've used in the past and have had great success with. Uh, so we will be continuing with that program, which is 100% aligned to the TEKS. Financial Math uses Dave Ramsey, and then Algebra 1, 2, and Geometry AP use College Board Springboard for the deeper, more rigorous resources. Um, as from teacher requests this year, they would like to add a supplemental program called Delta Math, and that is something that we have added on um, for next year for the Algebra 1 grade levels. Um, okay, and then social studies, um, K through 2, we continue to do a blend of either um, our adopted scope and sequence or we use the TEKS resource depending on the grade level. We have been supplementing with K through, uh, K through 6 studies weekly for quite some time. It is 100% aligned to the TEKS, but many of our adoptions came with alignments to social studies, and so some grade levels don't have to utilize the program as often, but we are over covered in that area with appropriate resources for the TEKS alignment. Um, for 7th and 8th grade, they will uh, continue with world, world cultures and geography with Texas history, U.S. history, with our McGraw-Hill um, programs. And then finally, high school continue with McGraw-Hill as well for U.S. government history, world geography, and world history. And then our AP advanced placement world history uses AMSCO. And then... The last section of this is our science certification. Uh, we have been using STEM scopes now almost, well, it's actually a K through 12 program now. Uh, we are continuing with STEM scopes. There was great response from the teachers who piloted that this past year. Um, and we will continue with that through this next school year. We're still in one more year of a gap year. And this upcoming year, they will be adopting new science materials. So it'll be an exciting year for science this next year. Um, as far as our, that goes 6 through 8, all the way 9 through 12, that includes biology, chemistry, physics, and then IPC uses some blended materials with Cengage. And then the final piece that we do have to certify every year for the State Board of Education and the Commissioner is our K through 3 phonics uh, program. We do have 100% alignment to phonics with our HMH into reading. We've also added the Saxon phonics as a supplement, and then of course Estrelita, but our HMH program is 100% cover our alignment to our standards there. The final piece that we do have to certify to the board is the Children's Internet Protection Act. Uh, this was enacted by Congress in 2000. Uh, about concerns about children's access to harmful content over the internet. And so you can see the questions there uh, about whether or not we do protect against that in compliance with the act. And you can see the answers there are yes, as well as the following TEKS resource review. 
And the very last piece of this is really pretty much just talking about our assessments and what we use outside of STAR. Um, NWEA EA MAP continues as well as our required screeners for CLI Engage. Um, we use Texas Kia, Circle for Pre-K, and then a few other programs as well. On the very back page, you can see that there is a certification there, and the board president and board secretary will have to sign that for the final um, approval. And then that will be sent into the State Board of Education for the final reports. So do you have any questions? OK. Thank you. And we have a motion with that, so I'll entertain one. I move that the board certifies that the instructional materials used by the district meet the criteria listed on the instructional materials allotment antique certification form for the 2023-2024 year. Okay. All right, we have moved and seconded that the, we're going to certify the instructional materials used by the district, meet the criteria listed on the instructional materials allotment and take certification form for 2023-2024. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. I, all opposed, say no. Ayes have it, and we have certified the instructional materials to be used by the district that meet the criteria listed on the instructional materials allotment and take certification form for 2023-2024. Now we're going to go into consent agenda. I move we approve the consent agenda as per presented. Okay, is there a second? second? All right, I'll motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed say no. Ayes have it, and we've approved the consent agenda. Ms. Harrison, do we have an audience for guests? All right, there's no audience for guests. All right. We're going to adjourn into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01.